My name's Justin Deacon, and this is my son, Travis Deacon. We're both full-time engravers at Montana Silversmiths. As far as the engraving end of it, my brother, Jesse Deacon, started the whole thing. He started it when he was a young man in Wickenburg, Arizona, working for a guy named Jim Custer. And uh, eventually, we brought our trade to, to Montana. Um, uh, he taught me, and, and uh, I ta I'm teaching my son. Being an engraver is kind of a coveted thing, you know. I mean, there's, there's no schools. You, you can't go to school and learn how to be a hand engraver. You have to have somebody, you know, to apprentice. And my brother kind of forced me into it. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I mean, that's what happened. And, and uh, those guys that he was working with wanted him to teach him how to engrave. And, and he's like, no, he goes, I'm going to teach my brother. You know, and, and that's how that happened. And, and hell, I was 16 years old. I didn't have a whole lot going on. I was like, all right, you know. So I started doing it, I've been doing it ever since. And uh, it's been a good trade, you know, for me and my brother and, and my son. I have a letter at home that he did in like, his first grade and he, he said, when I grow up, I wanna be a hand engraver like my dad and my uncle. And, and I, you know, I thought, hell, it's just a kid, you know, talking. And ever since I was a little tiny kid, ever since I knew what engraving was, that's what I wanted to do. My uncle did it, my dad did it. And uh, as soon as I turned 16, they brought me in as an apprentice, and uh, it was just a dream come true. You know, I, I didn't know what I was walking in, really. I didn't know what to expect, and uh, got a wake-up call pretty quick. But it's it's been pretty unreal being able to, in my opinion, learn from the best in the world, my uncle and my dad. I, I enjoy it every single day, and I learn something new every single day, if not multiple things every day. The father of our style of engraving is named Fran Harry. He's the guy that invented our style of engraving. He did it his whole life and died. Nobody even knows who he is except people like us that are carrying that tradition on. And uh, he was a true master, that guy was. Each individual guy that engraves is, their engraving's like a signature or handwriting. I mean, you can hand me a buckle and say, who engraved that? And I can tell you who engraved it, you know, just by looking at it. The hand engraving end of it is a is a lost art, you know, I mean, the actual hand cutting, hand engraving, there's only a handful of guys in the whole world that are doing that now. You have to really commit a good portion of your life into, and, and it's true, I know that sounds crazy, but it's true, it's, I mean, you have to, you have to really want to do it to get good at it. Most people don't know that you, you might have three hours in making one tool and solder on tools together and and temper them and you gotta you know if you don't temper right then the tool don't work and there's a lot of artistry just in the tools. Montana Silversmith started doing the NFR buckles I believe in 2001. I suppose the biggest thing that stands out on a gold buckle is it's a gold buckle. That's what it is. It's gold. I mean the base is gold, all the overlays are gold, you know, and I mean how cool is that? I mean that's that's the coolest thing you could ever work on in our world is a gold buckle. When I first come into the business, being the young guy, we never got to touch them buckles. You know, it was always the old guys that, that put their time in that got to work on them buckles, the true masters, you know. I made my way through the ranks and, and finally got to work on them, and, and this kid does more of them than I do now. <laughs> we take a huge amount of pride in the buckles that we work on. My whole team is amazing. I mean, every one of them. And we put everything into those buckles that we can. Each one of those buckles is individual. I mean, there's no two gold buckles the same. You know, the two team roping buckles are different. And that's just from each individual craftsman putting their time into it, you know. I mean, we couldn't make two the same if we tried. From the beginning of that, I mean, you're, you're talking about panographing parts out and guys' hands sawing it. To, to the fabricators hand soldering. I mean, that's an art all on its own. Just just guys soldering, you know. I mean, it, it takes a long time to learn and from polishing to engraving to, to the finished product, you know. I mean, that, that's kind of a short story, but, and it's each individual person that touches that buckle that 
makes it what it is. You know, our group is a, is a really small, specialized group. There isn't a huge amount of people that work on them buckles. And they, because those people that touch those gold buckles, they're, they're the best we got. You know? And not everybody can come work on one of them buckles. Every buckle does have a story because everyone is individual, just like the individual that wins it. And the amount of craftsmanship that we put into it is a story in itself. And then the guy winning the buckle, it's a big story for him. The years of devotion you have to put into to learning how to bright cut and grave is, is just like one of these rodeo guys making it to the NFR. It's the same kind of thing. I mean, to get to that level, you got to put your time in. And we're putting everything into it that we can. And, you know, I, I take great pride in, in working in them buckles, you know, and I know, I know Travis does. We're a Western family, you know, we've grown up in, in round horses and cows our whole lives. And of course, rodeo's always been a part of our lives too, you know, and I'm, this kid rodeoed a bunch. And, my dad rodeoed, my grandpa rodeoed, my brother Jesse rodeoed, and, and I did some when I was young. And so it's always kind of been part of our lives. So to, to get to work on the, the, the pinnacle of those buckles is pretty cool.